Hello, it is Thursday, September 16th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Thursday puzzle. As I always say, think of the Thursday puzzle as the first really tricky puzzle of the week. Often we've got some kind of wacky theme or gimmick or strange mechanic, um, and the cluing gets a little bit more, I don't know, indirect often. Let's see how we fare. But first, uh, one quick, only one um, clarification, I think, from yesterday's Wednesday puzzle, which uh, I think was a pretty popular puzzle. I liked it a lot myself. And Nitro Dog 96 says, I haven't seen anyone explain what a piecewise function is. So that was um, an answer in the, in the grid. So I'll explain it myself. A piecewise function is a function that is defined in multiple parts. Rather than just using one function for a definition, like y equals 2x, the piecewise function has separate functions for different intervals on its variables. And, uh, and then this commenter goes into further explanation with examples, which I won't go into here. I don't think they'll read very well verbally, um, but it's well explained on the page. And uh, NitroDog96 ends... As a younger college-age solver, this was taught to me in middle or high school math class. I don't blame you for forgetting or never having known. It doesn't come up often. Does not come up often outside the classroom. So thank you, NitroDog96. And if you would like more of that explanation, just head over to the comments from yesterday's video, and you will see an example of a piecewise function. All right. So let's get on with today's crossword. This is, of course, a Thursday puzzle by Kevin Patterson, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. No idea what we're getting into here, but am I ready to get started? I say I am. Okay. All right, here we have a Christmas classic covered by Bing Crosby and Bob Dylan, among others. Well, my first thought was White Christmas, and I thought maybe it could be white here, with some with the Christmas elsewhere in some kind of theme situation, but it has Christmas in the clue. So I'm actually, I think that would be pretty unlikely. And I'm not sure. Are there Christmas songs that are is there a sort of Christmas classic whose entire title would fit in five letters? Probably. I'm not sure offhand. Let's keep looking. Kind of gorilla. Oh, I don't know offhand. Second best era. Second best era. I suppose often people refer to the golden age as the best era of something and the silver age as the sort of second best. Could that be something? I'm wondering if there's, if we're going to need to get longer answers into these spaces. For some reason, that feels like it might need to happen to me. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. So 13, matrimony, that's marriage. Um, 14, blank park, neighborhood in central Los Angeles, not sure. 15, neologism for the best ever. Okay, well this, at least I think, can finally get something in the grid here. I think is probably goat, the greatest of all time, has become very commonly used in the last several years. I think this is very much a modern um, initial uh, acronym, hence neologism, something that's been relatively newly formed. So let's look here. Terribly eager. Could it be agog? Could be. Let's check the crosses. So we have the second best era here. Not sure. And then here we have other in Spanish. Could be otro or otra, I think, depending on gender, I think. Not, we'll just have to wait and see. Terribly eager, right. So if that's a gog, a prom purchase, prom meaning a dance in high school or secondary school, a gown. So this does look like a gog to me. So maybe that that silver era was totally wrong. Also, silver era, again, would have era, era in it. So probably incorrect. Okay, so what is this? Monopoly Square between Marvin Gardens and Pacific Avenue. Oh boy, I don't. I have not played Monopoly in ages and ages and ages. Extremely catchy tunes ah, are earworms. So what is this? Second best era. I mean, could this be R? 
The second letter in era spelled phonetically? I don't think so. That seems pretty tortured. Let's keep looking at the crosses over here. So if this is Otro or Otra, here we have the gift of persuasiveness. Don't know. And here we have nudge. Feels like there's something in this puzzle I'm not seeing yet. Japanese company with six stars in its logo. Japanese company with six stars in its logo. Um, boy, I don't know. A lot in this puzzle I don't know, isn't there? Here we have six Premier League teams play in it. Um, so Premier League is the English football, one of the English football leagues, six Premier League teams play in it. Would this be the Euros, maybe? The European Championship? Not sure. Apt foreign rhyme of moon. Ah, well, it could be loon. <clears throat> What's apt about that? I suppose apt meaning it means moon. Fair enough. Uh, 2016 inductee into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Not sure. Discharges. Feels that those could be a few things. Do a certain veterinary job. Um, could be spay, as in spaying and neutering. Old-fashioned possessive. Old-fashioned possessive. So something like my or his or hers, but old-fashioned. Not sure offhand. Simple solution to a big problem. Just stop already. Laura of Ozark. Ugh, I've never seen Ozark. Mine locales. Caps or cones procedure. I think snow caps or snow cones. This has actually come up in the, in the puzzle a few times recently. Matrimony. How many words could there be for, for marriage? <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Oh, union, perhaps? That's more general than I would have assumed, but maybe. Mine locales. Loads? Doesn't seem right to me. Laura Linney, maybe? Was she in Ozark? I have no idea. It's just the name of, a, of an actress named Laura. Just stop already. And enough. There we go. All right. Oh, bells. Oh, jingle bells? Christmas classic? So there is something going on here. We do have to get more into the grid. So where is the jingle? Interesting. So mine locales. Yeah, maybe it is loads, actually. What do you know? So a simple solution to a big problem. So I wonder if this also has a word missing at the beginning. What is this here? Discharges. Oh, egests, as opposed to ingests, which would be take something in, egest, discharge it, goes out. Old-fashioned possessive, oh, I see, thy, as in your. Oh, so a silver bullet. Okay, so there's something going on here. The simple solution to a big problem is a silver bullet. Here we had jingle bells. So silver and jingle. I mean, they're sort of related in that they're both sh have a jangly, shiny sort of feeling to them. I'm not really sure what that, what brings those things together, to be honest. So six premier teams, premier league teams playing at, oh, London something. Are there six London-based football teams in the Premier League? London area? <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, like some healthier potato chips. Uh, no salt, perhaps. I did not need to hear that in brief. Too much information, TMI. Oh, here we go. With 44 across, a bit of a consolation, bit of consolation, or a feature of this puzzle's grid. Oh, it must be silver something, right? Oh, no, sorry. This isn't jingle bells. It's silver bells. I'm sorry. <laughs> that probably seemed very silly. I apologize. Uh, yeah, what could possibly tie these things together? Uh, in fact, it's the exact same word missing. Not jingle bells, but silver bells and silver bullets. So that's the theme. It has something to do with silver. And a bit of a consolation is a silver lining. So indeed, the silver era is... Well, hmm. Is it spelled backwards? Second best era is silver. So does it... It must be, because... Agog and earworms both fit very well. So what would this one be then, I wonder? Silverback, silverback gorilla, but which direction? <laughs> In which direction do we spell it? Um, so cannellini, that's a type of pasta. Oh, no, sorry, it's a type of bean. I'm sorry, it's a bean, not a type of pasta. Um, it's a white bean. So that would suggest back here. I mean, I could have this wrong, I suppose. This seems so correct, though. Everything here seems correct including the Otro, or Otro. Let's keep looking around. The National Mall has more than 300 of them. Um, could this be a tree type, maybe? Shabbily made is cheap. It's easy enough. Famously sleepy animals, koalas, I suppose. Echo Park, I guess, neighborhood in central Los Angeles. Seems right. Oh, I suppose six Premier League teams play, and it is indeed the London area. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> oh, more than 300 acres in the National Mall, I see. And then the inductee into the Basketball Hall of Fame is O'Neill, Shaquille O'Neill, Dr. O'Neill, as I now know from a recent comment, or no, recent um, clue in the crossword, doctorate in education for Shaquille O'Neill, I believe. So what's this here? Whitman of Arrested Development. Um, I've seen Arrested Development, but I don't remember this person. Heinous would be evil. May Whitman, I suppose. Seems plausible. Easy basket. Basketball, probably. Prefix with genetics. Epigenetics, I believe, is something we've heard about recently. An icy place to go would be a rink, a skating rink. And some flower girls. Let's see, what is this again? Easy basket. I suspect that would be a tip in. It's so easy, all you have to do is tip it in. And then here we have score specification. Score specification. Could it be a musical score, perhaps? Maybe. Let's go back up to our crosses that we are actually, we have it down here. Oh, right, this is the Monopoly. Let's return to our crosses. Oh. Screen's not updating? Okay. Japanese company with six stars in its logo. I don't know. This is one of those ones. If you just happened to know this, it would be incredibly obvious. So I'm sure it is to many of you, but I don't know it offhand. Like 27 and 20, 20, 2017 and 2027. What, what is common about those years? Oh, prime. Ah, they're, <laughs> I mean, they are years, but it's incidental that they're years. Those numbers were chosen as misdirection because they're obviously uh, years, and yet that is irrelevant to the clue. They are prime numbers, so they have no divisors other than the, the number itself and one, I think. I think those are prime numbers. Absolutely. Yep. Fair enough. To crow is to brag. Gore and more would be uh, owls. Al Gore and other gores. So not just Al, but other gores, uh, other Al's, sorry. Oh, Subaru, I suppose. This isn't yep, it's yup. Subaru. Yeah, I guess, I guess uh, Subaru has six stars in its logo. I'm sure it does. Don't recognize it offhand. Sorry, just a message on my phone. I just have to quickly reply to here. I apologize. I don't usually do this, but it's slightly urgent. Uh, 
Okay. Um, gift of persuasiveness would be tongue, I suppose. Oh, a silver tongue. Yes, of course. Silver tongue. And a nudge would be a jaw, a jog. You might give someone a jog, give them a nudge if they're forgetting to do something, say. What? Oh. Roto jail, Monopoly Square. Oh, go to jail. Sorry. Ah, another very silly oversight for myself. It's not the silver era. Of course it's not. I'm sorry. You must have been E yelling at me through the screen all this time. Obviously, this was not going to be era because as I pointed out myself in this very puzzle, era was in the clue. And this is a good opportunity to remind yourself, but more importantly, remind myself that uh, you will never use part of the clue in the answer. So, of course, this was never going to be era. It was always going to be age because era cannot be used in the answer. So that makes the Monopoly Square go to jail. Sorry, I feel as though I'm really... Uh, I am a slightly under the weather. I definitely don't have COVID. I took a test, but I do have some kind of um, minor illness, I think. And I'm maybe a little under the weather, but also maybe that's just making excuses. Excuses. Anyway, let's see. All right. Something found in strands. Could be DNA or RNA, I guess. Okay. Complete in the America's Cup, say. That is a sailing competition. I am aware of that at the very least. Nearly massless subatomic particle. Oh boy, I'm not sure. Maybe a neutron? Nope. Neutrino? I'm <laughs> just guessing at things that fit, fit the fill here. Uh, neutrino seems plausible. Let's check the crosses, though. An attractive older fellow. Ah, a silver fox. You know what? I am going to do the thing that people always request I do, which is to look at the remaining theme answers, which appear to be on the perimeter of the puzzles. That happens sometimes in the New York Times uh, crossword is sometimes you'll get themes whose answers are confined to perimeter squares. And that's actually a case in which, generally speaking, Lyle's Law, which indicates that the explanatory theme clue and answer are generally found towards the bottom of the grid in the across clues, uh, it's usually broken, and often in these sort of perimeter-based themes, you'll get the explanatory theme answer in the center of the grid. So that is exactly the case here. It is centered um, uh, sort of symmetrically, so silver lining in, in um, rotationally symmetrical positions there. Okay, anyway, let's look at our additional theme answers. Marvel character with metallic skin, silver something. Well, that makes sense that it would be. Um, not sure offhand. Let's keep looking around. Metonym for the movie industry, the silver screen. There we go. And a sim symbol of privileges. Symbol of privilege is a silver spoon. Forks and knives, for example, are silverware. I think technically only silverware if they're actually made of silver. Otherwise, they're cutlery or flatware or what have you. But I think silverware has largely entered common parlance for that. Okay. So, um, let's see if we can get this one with some crosses. Welcome at the front door would be to see in. Parts of soft palettes. Is, I mean, based on this U and L, is your uvula part of your, I know your soft palate is, is something inside of your sort of mouth throat area. I bet it's your uvula, no. Oh, parts, yes not part. So it could be uvulas or uvulae with an E. I don't know which, so I'm going to leave it blank for now. Here we have a crop problem. Um, with that T, it could be rot. Your crops could rot in a bad year. Christmas trees are furs, I assume. This looks like Silver Surfer. Okay, I've heard that one before. I've heard of that character. So a certain pizza topping slangle is roni, I guess, for pepperoni. I don't think I've ever heard anyone abbreviate pepperoni roni, but it's the first time for everything. Make amends. Ah, clever. So make amends ordinarily would mean um, to apologize, to atone for something. Um, but in this case, with that question mark, we're being hinted at um, a bit of misdirection or pun, and it is to edit, to amend a text. And I think on a tougher day, honestly maybe on a Friday or Saturday, I don't even think you'd need that question mark because it is literally true that to make amends is to edit, to, well, no, I guess that's not true because amends, you'd say you'd, you'd make, yeah, I guess 
an instant of an instance of editing a manuscript is not called an amend. It would be an amendment or something. So yeah, I suppose you do actually need the question mark if you're being honest. Okay. What is this? Lacking. Oh, devoid of. I don't think we've looked at that yet. And that uh, sort of disambiguates this strand. No longer RNA or DNA, but just DNA. Thumbs down would is nay. And hairy Tibetan beats, beasts are yaks. Let's see. Here's an idea. Say now. Oh, I see. Say now. Say now. Yes. Okay. Forthright. Um, if one is forthright, one is what honest or straightforward or direct. Why am I not seeing that? Don't know. Let's let's look here. Super Mario creature that resembles a turtle. Um, a Koopa. I think this is from the Super Mario video game series. Um, there's a character in that series that used to be called King Koopa. I think it is now called Bowser, which probably has something to do with sort of unifying different localized versions. Anyway, more confident would be surer, more sure. And for, oh, forthright is open. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Philosopher Descartes would be Rene Descartes. Oops. Oops. There's some kind of machinery outside. Sorry if that's very loud for you. All right. Silence. In brackets, so something that sort of represents silence, maybe non-verbally. Not sure just yet. Blank kidding. You're kidding. Let's see. Some flower girls. Oh, nieces. I see. So flower girls at a wedding. I was thinking flower girls selling flowers on the street, which isn't really something that happens anymore or has ever in my lifetime, as far as I'm aware. But I think for sort of cinematic reasons, that was what was in my head. Okay. December 31st, we have December being abbreviated, so this will too be an abbreviation. It is New Year's Eve, NYE. Blank the Saxon, Ivanhoe's father in Ivanhoe. Must be Cedric, right, based on the fill? Okay. Sound heard before many a classic movie, a roar. That's, um, what is it, Leo the Lion, I think, at the beginning of the MGM Metro Goldman Meyer um, kind of production logo. A debacle is a fiasco. Oops. To sag is to droop. Error of Ken Burns documentaries. This is the um, public broadcaster in the United States, PBS, the public broadcasting system. And game played on a 91 foot by 13 foot court. Certainly wouldn't have known those dimensions, but it must be bocce, bocce ball. And a player at the highest elevation NFL stadium. Not sure, but I'm sure we can fill it with crosses. Some significant others for shorts. Oh, could be, hmm, this is actually tough. Could be BFs or GFs for boyfriends or girlfriends. Um, that's actually not, that's a little frustrating. So here we have, oh, no response for silence. Oh, this looks like Bronco though, actually now with that N in there. Didn't see it before, but now I do. And so this must be boyfriends, BFs. And there we go. There is the Thursday puzzle. So that one I found pretty tricky at the start, but then once... Once the theme came together, it was I found it to be a very smooth solve. And I, I will acknowledge that I'm I've seen over the, you know over the years during which I've been solving the New York Times crossword, I've seen enough themes to know that sometimes you do get this um, uh, perimeter thing going on. Whereas I could I could imagine someone solving this puzzle, not necessarily having that as something to be looking out for. And just noticing a couple of the, the theme clues and then not being able to necessarily extend it out into that pattern and get all that extra fill, which I did, which was which was quite useful. And so um, I guess that's part of the point of this series is making you aware of that sort of thing. But let me know how you fared with this puzzle. I, I thought this was a, a really good puzzle. This has been a, a pretty good week, I think, for puzzles in general. I mean, I think that, that Tuesday was was pretty tough. We would all agree. But but um, I've been enjoying them, and I like this, and I like that theme, and I really made a bit of a fool of myself a few times in this puzzle, didn't I, with this era here being clearly impossible, but lasting much longer than it should have for me, and then also not somehow connecting the dots between silver bullets and silver bells. 
Uh, sorry about that noise out there. I'll probably wrap this up. I don't know if that's going to continue. Um, all right. So that's the puzzle for Thursday, September 16th. A nice one by Kevin Patterson with a fun silver lining theme. Again, do let me know how you fared. Um, uh, if you enjoy this series, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button and that bell if you would like to be notified. I think that's how that works. And if you know someone who might benefit from having the uh, vagaries of perimeter-based theme deconstruction explained, why not pass this on to a friend or somewhere in your online network, world of online communication. Uh, maybe someone out there might enjoy this series as well. You'll never know until you pass it on to them. And finally, if you do enjoy the series and you'd like to contribute to its ongoing sustainability, why not consider tossing me a couple of quid or a few bucks over on my coffee donation page, which is linked in the description field underneath each video. And as I've mentioned a few times recently, I am starting a Patreon soon, so that will be an alternative way to contribute on a monthly basis and um, get access to a couple bonus things that I'm going to uh, hopefully be putting together. So anyway, keep a lookout for that, hopefully soon. And thank you so much for simply watching this video. Again, I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. And I also particularly hope you have an excellent rest of your Thursday. Take care.